Welcome to the On Deck Podcast for all your baseball DFS needs with your superstar host, fantasy baseball experts, Casey Bubba and Bogman. On Deck Podcast is sponsored by Line Star App, the number one top rated data and analytics tool for daily fantasy sports. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the On Deck MLB DFS podcast brought to you by the wonderful people at Lion Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Lion Star App and at Lion Star MLB and download the app in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. You will not regret it. It's got the chat, the optimizers, the stack tool, the values, everything you can need and more in the palm of your hands. So go check that out. You can find me on Twitter at BDN Trick, my co host on Twitter at Bogman Sports and Bogs. If you mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's right. Turnbull. I mean, uh, great no hitter here. Uh, another one in Seattle, another one against Seattle. Uh, what is it about Safeco that just churns out no hitters? It's crazy. I mean, obviously the Mariners lineup this year is what does it, but uh, great performance by him. And I think we got to be in on Scooble tonight. So uh, oh God, I can't th- do there's- it. I mean, I know you're right. My Mariners seven, are miserable my, yeah. right now. How Mice can you had, not? had seven Ks last night. Turnbull no hitter with eight Ks tonight. It's uh, not many times you want to take a whew. Tigers pitcher. This is their first no hitter since Verlander in 2011. They said so. Whew. I think that one was against. Wasn't that in Toronto uh, against the Blue Jays for uh, Verlander? Sure, it's been so long. I don't know. <laughs> that was pre Kate Upton days, so I I didn't keep track of Verlander that hard then. Yeah, my favorite Verlander uh, like picture ever. Yeah, that yeah, that that's what it was. It was in Toronto against the Blue Jays. Uh, my my favorite uh, picture of, of Verlander ever is he's getting out of a Ferrari with Kate Upton right after he'd signed his three hundred million dollar extension, and uh, it said, you know, maybe one day it'll all work out for Verlander. So, or like you know, it's just proof that money can buy happiness. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. But uh, yeah, still a wild night. Fourteen games, uh, a lot taking place. Matt Harvey was Matt Harvey. That was beautiful. We saw that one just absolutely glorious to see that take place. Uh, Sean Manai got hit around again. Uh, that's starting to become a, a thing again. So I we'll have to keep an eye on that going forward. Urias was great. Woodruff pitched well. Just couldn't get a strikeout or any run support. So that was yeah. fun. Wheeler was awesome. So the top priced arms pitched great. There's no hiding that. Uh, the Bubic for 4K got you almost 20 yeah, DK points. That, that was great. Was, he went six innings. That was the only reason why I liked him because I knew he was stretched out. Let's put it that way. So that was interesting. And uh, Freeman was Dong. Freeman, I didn't I tell you I said you're going to get one because I used them everywhere on Monday <laughs> and he did nothing. I'm like, I'm yeah. watching a great call because you're going to get one. So you got one. <laughs> Humphrey's got one. I'm still sitting there kind of, you know, watching everybody have a good time. So the, the one the, the one thing I'll say just to make myself feel better because that's what I'm here for. I had Bichette, and it seems like more often than not, my guys, even when they don't homer, get double digit fantasy points. Yeah. So I'll at least take that much like they were. Productive. I did notice that, too, you know, most of the time. Now, I think Nelson Cruz went like over four or two strikeouts on Monday. But for in general, the yeah, guys general. that we picked for the home run, if they don't get a home run, you know, still they, they still put up some points. Yeah, and that's in the end, that's what we need. So that's a good sign, and we hope to keep it going for you on this Wednesday 12-game slate for everybody. Before we get into the slate, let's just get over the semantics now. If you could leave us a rate and review on iTunes, we would much appreciate it. It would help the podcast out a lot. And also, if you prefer to watch us tell you about the slate of for the day ahead, go to the Lion Star YouTube channel, subscribe, like, and share all the goodies there. That would be awesome as well. All right, 12-game slate, Bogman. Let's get crack a lacking on this one. And we got some really good pitching on this slate yet again, especially up top. And it starts out yeah. with Miami at Philadelphia. We got uh, Trevor Rogers versus Zach Eflin. The total is 7.5 on this one, which is rightfully so. Rogers 9,197 on uh, DK Fandle, respectively. Eflin, 83 and 93. Both pitchers have shown good stuff. These offenses are hit and miss. And Philadelphia's been horrific versus left-handed pitching. So I'm going to throw that out there right now. Do you like either pitcher in this one? Yeah, I mean, I like Rodgers. Only allowed three earned runs once this season. High K upside against Philly, who has been striking out a decent amount. So, yeah, I mean, Eflin, Eflin's two hit or miss for me to take him on this slate. He's a good pitcher. He's been good recently. But, uh, like I said, he's been hit or miss. And like you said before, a lot of pitchers on this slate are startable. So, I'm just going to be very picky today. So, going to say no to Eflin, but yes to Rogers. 
Yeah, a lot of high price options. If like you really need a value, there's a couple other I like. So, you, but I could see an F an argument. But I do prefer Rodgers. Again, Philadelphia bad versus lefties. Don't look at the eight runs on Tuesday. That was almost all against the bullpen. Like, mm-hmm. and, and they couldn't hit Poteet. Nider got taken out. Didn't start, which sucked. So I was looking forward to that. Poteet did pretty good. But uh, what bats are you looking at? Are you looking to attack? Uh, you know, Jazz Chisholm went deep on Tuesday. The dude is just in fuego. Yeah, did you see him uh, waving his finger at Harper too? So yeah, you wouldn't dude, have thrown me jazz. out. Jazz yeah. is just everything I that embodies fun in baseball. I love he, everything about it. He's a lot of fun, man. But I don't really want uh, Philly bats against Rogers. I, yeah. I like some of these Miami bats. Uh, Brian Anderson, uh, six for sixteen against Eflin with a bomb. Eight for twenty-five for Rojas with two doubles and a homer. Uh, Bertiz three for eleven against him, and uh, you know. Jesus Aguilar just keeps hitting. He's expensive on DK, 4,800, 3,100 on FanDuel. So a little bit of a cheaper option there. But uh, yeah, I, I like the Miami side of bats here. Yeah, give me Jazz Chisholm. Not sure I'm on too many other ones there because I, I respect F1 enough, but I get it. I definitely get it. But yeah, give me the give me some Trevor Rogers if you're looking that route. Uh, next game on the docket, we have Tampa Bay at Baltimore on this one. And it's typical Tampa Bay fashion. We're still waiting on totals and who's actually starting and so many fun moving pieces. So we don't have a total on this one for now. It looks like Ryan Yarborough starting. He's 66 on DK 76 on FanDuel. We might get Rich Hill. Who knows? It's a lefty. It's all we know. It's the race. Um, Yeah. It's at Baltimore and you get John means 9,400 on DK 10,000 on FanDuel. And the Rays went off on Matt Harvey. But if you look back on the Rays, like last month or so, they cannot hit left-handed pitching to save their life. So John Means is very viable to see. Absolutely. And Means has been on fire, obviously. It lasts uh, four starts. I think he's uh, given up two. It's two runs in his last 27 and two-thirds innings. So that's over his last four starts. And uh, Tampa Bay has struck out more than anybody else, I think, in the league so far. So uh, I'm all over Means. I'd rather have Means than Rogers. I'll say that. Um and uh, it means I'm out on Tampa Bay bats, wholly and completely. Don't want any of them. Even Austin Meadows, who's priced nice, 3900 3200 and he's been hot recently. I would rather go with Mancini, who's expensive. Mullins is a little expensive. Austin Hayes has been hitting a little bit, too. He's 36 and 34 So uh, that's what I'm looking for. Means and maybe some Baltimore bats, but not much on the bat front here. Yeah, um, the Tampa Bay Rays are striking out 32% of the time. First left-handed Oof. pitching this season. And that's factoring in the whole season. I could have narrowed that down to the really bad run they're on, but it's dreadful. So, yeah, all the means sounds very, very tasty here. And if it is Yarborough, like Hill's pitched really good his last three outings, and the blow-ups can always happen with Hill. I get it. But Yarborough, he's such a soft tosser right now, and his off-speed pitches have been so hit and miss. If you want to be contrarian and you're looking for value, you mentioned like Hayes. Mancini's expensive, but Hayes, Mountcastle, um, Cedric Mullins is eating, hitting lefties fine. There's some interesting value plays on Baltimore if you need to mix it up in a tournament type format. Next game on the slate for you here you got the New York Mets at the Atlanta Braves. Another just dandy on our hands here. And another one we have no total on because just movable pitching targets all over the place. We have uh, David Peterson, 7,300 on DK, 75 on Fanduel. Charlie Morton, 85 on DK, 68 on Fanduel. Um, the Atlanta Braves offense is tilting. I still don't think I want to target them yet. And Charlie Morton gets a lot of strikeouts, gets hit a lot, but this Mets offense is dreadful right now. So I don't think I want any pitching here, but I could see if you do. I want Peterson. Uh, he hasn't given up more than three earned runs since his first start. Uh, high K upside. The Braves outside of Acuna just haven't been hitting. So uh, I'm I'm okay with Peterson in this game. I don't really want – Morton has been rough like the last couple times out, so I'm going to pass on him. But I do quick, like Peterson. Quick stat, quick stat for you on the Braves versus lefty. So another reason to maybe like Peterson on the season, 27.5% K rate, 215 average, and it's 82 WRC plus against left-handed yeah. pitching. So there is a lot to like there if you really want to. Love it. Uh, as far like? as bats go, I would just go once again on the Mets side. Uh, Lindor, 47, 3,000. Dom Smith, 41 and 28. There's not a lot to like with the bats here. I mean, if you are on the Atlanta side, Freddie Freeman hit a bomb tonight. He's picking it up. Your boy Contreras is picking it up. So are Ozuna, Albies, and Riley's been good recently too. But uh, I think I want to stick to Peterson and maybe, maybe just Lindor or Smith. That's it. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Riley lately, and I don't mind like some of these one-offs with the Braves. 
I just they've just been so they've been so tilting. I either don't play them and they go off, I play them and they don't. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let you guys know in the Line Star chat if you download the Line Star app. I'll let you know if I'm playing them or not. So there you go. Go download it and you'll know if you should play them or not. Um, next game on the night: Boston Red Sox, Toronto Blue Jays. Garrett Richards, Ross Stripling. And we've mentioned pitchers we like already. Well, this game has no under of ten and a half, and that might be too low because I am just ready to just load up on this game. But this is Coors Field in the South. So what do you like in this one? Yeah, not the pitching, like you said. I mean, Richard's been good recently, but his uh, start against Toronto this year was four and two-thirds, three earned, six walks, two strikeouts, a hard pass. Uh, same thing with Stripling. His best start was his last time out, but I'm not going to mess with them here. No, I like bats here galore. They're all expensive, though. Uh, outside of Bobby Dahlbeck is cheap, 29 and 24, but Devers, Bogarts, J.D. Martinez, Vlad, T. Oscar, Bo Bichette, Marcus Simeon are all expensive bats, but I would pay up for any of them. Yeah, they are priced like they're in Coors Field. Um, yeah. when the, fact, the fact that Vlad, Bichette, and Simeon are all over 6K, like you don't even see that in Coors Field very often. So they're priced up. There are some value arms we can talk about for DraftKings-wise later on, but uh, – it's a stack I'm very much a fan of, that, that to say the least. Uh, Washington at Chicago, Wrigley Field special, so no total on this one. Scherzer, Arietta, if this was like seven years ago, this would be a great matchup, but right now it's kind of one-sided. Scherzer's 10K on DK, 11-7 on Fandle, Arietta 76 and 7,000 respectively. Um, I have zero problem if you want to use Scherzer in this one. The only, I guess, caveat I'll say is it's the wind's supposed to be blowing out to left field, and we know Scherzer will give up a home run from time to time. Right. But he could strike out a ton of Cubs because plus Rizzo left him the fifth of the bad back. So he might even be out tomorrow. Yeah. And Washington has some hot hitters too. I mean, uh, Schwarber, Turner, Yon Gomes has been hitting. Uh, Soto has a good track record against Arietta, and so does Bell. So uh, I'm, I'm good. I think Scherzer might be the chalkiest shock. And because of some other big pitchers that we have mm -hmm. in this slate, I think that he's going to be at one of his lower owner per, uh, ownership percentages uh, over this season. So, yeah, I think I, I'm good with Scherzer here too. Uh, Arietta, I don't, I don't hate him. He's had one blow up. He's been good outside of that. But like I said about being picky with all these good pitchers, uh, I'm just going to pass on him. Yeah, I'm passing on Arietta. If you want to put some Washington stacks together. No problem there, especially with the big lefty thumpers that you talked about with Bell, Schwarber, Soto, and throw in some Turner in there. No problem with that at all, but do like some Scherzer tonight. Uh, another game on tap tonight, Pittsburgh Pirates at the St. Louis Cardinals. Trevor Cahill, Jack Flaherty, over under seven on this one. Cahill, 69 and 5,800. Flaherty is 9,700 on DK, 10, 8 on FanDuel. I love Flaherty at $9,700 if you want to save some cash and still have a side upside against this Pittsburgh Pirate offense. I think he's the best option on the slate tonight. You know, like you said, he's a little bit cheaper than uh, Scherzer. He's had five quality starts in a row. He's going up against the Pirates, and Trevor Cahill is starting for them. My note on Trevor Cahill, Bubba, just says never. So uh, I think that's because I watched him as a Diamondback for a long time, and he was miserable. So, and uh, there's some good uh, PVB here too. Goldie four for six with a double against Cahill. Carpenter six for thirteen with two doubles. Uh, Yachty four for 13 with a bomb and Arenado and Bader have both been hot as well. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm in on the Cardinals and Flaherty. Yeah. If you want to use the Cardinals bats, that's fine. I don't disagree with that. Probably not going to focus a lot of my energy there, but I get it. I love Flaherty though. Big, big fan of Flaherty on this slate, the, the savings. And I think he's, I think he's got a similar upside to a lot of the guys priced above him. So I think that's a great way to save money and probably get lower ownership because it's not as flashy a name as the Scherzers and the other guys we're going to talk about as the podcast goes on. All right, next game, we had the Texas New York Yankees at the Texas Rangers. It's been a fun series with some offense from both sides in this one. We have no total yet on this one because it's Corey Kluber versus Yang, who's been working out of the bullpen, is going to start tonight. Kluber's 7,800 on both sites. Yang is 46 on DK, waiting on FanDuel on that one. Um, Yang has been interesting from the KBO He's shown some strikeout upside, but we haven't seen him really stretched out. And this is the Yankees, Bogman. Yeah. Do you like either arm here? Because I just don't believe I'm, I never Kluber, so I'm out on both pitchers. I don't hate Kluber, but it's the same thing I said about Arietta, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, you just got to be picky, and uh, the price is good too. Seventy eight hundred both sides, so uh, the price is nice. If you want to use him as your second to go with one of those big guys, I I'm for it. That's fine, but I think I just want to pay up for pitching today, so gonna pass on Kluber. 
Yeah, I'm out there. Are you going to these Yankee bats who they did some damage on uh, Tuesday? Just not a lot of power to like step. They, they got to go deep to pay off. Yeah, and so I would take the guys that can go deep, right? Judge and Voight being mm -hmm. the biggest of those two. Geo is still uh, – he's priced right on FanDuel. Uh, yeah, he's or he's it, pri priced incorrectly on FanDuel because he's, he's cheap, 2,500. 4,800 on on, fan, on DK is a bit much, but uh, 2,500 is – you almost have to take him at that price. It's ridiculous. So uh, those are the guys. I mean, if you're not starting Kluber, um, Dahl has been getting hot. Obviously, Adolis Garcia's price still hasn't matched. Yep. Bub, what he's been doing 38 okay. 34 and then ikf is still cheap too 39 and 28 so there's some bats to buy here yes yeah, so lack went deep on I, I love for some i have like a, a weird sense of humor but i love stacking up texas almost every night because they're cheap and <laughs> they they just have like a like a, a team that's either going to blow up or do nothing because they have so much like interesting power throughout that lineup and, it, like, and they're cheap so i have no problem putting like either mini stacks together with garcia and company I, I definitely could see that being used. Like like Dahl's 28. You go to uh, Garcia and Dahl. They're both hitting fifth and sixth in the lineup for a combined uh, $6,600 on DK. Yeah. It's so cheap. So I like some exposure to that. Uh, we go to L.A. Cleveland Indians at the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And uh, we saw Shohei Otani go deep on Tuesday again. The dude is just crazy. He's on the mound tonight. He got Savali at 77, 73 opposite Otani. Otani 74 on DK, 95 on FanDuel. He is, again, too cheap on DK. I preached it last week. No one played him, and he went off. He's volatile because he can walk a lot of guys. I get it, but he is still one of the best pitchers in all of baseball and should never be $7,400. Well, you know, it's funny. We were looking at the, the no-hitter list, and Cleveland is on there twice, twice. So uh, for having no-hitters against them, and Otani finally went deep, so... This is where I'm finally going to buy in. I haven't been in on him. I told you last week I wanted to just see him get deep to the sixth or seventh once, and he finally did it last week. So uh, that price is too good, especially against Cleveland. Savale uh, started with three quality starts, only one in his last five, though. So mm -hmm. not like the Angels are knocking the crap out of the ball or anything, but I I'm not going to mess with Savale here, even though he is a good price. For me, it's Otani and, you know, Walsh, maybe there's not a lot of bats to buy in this game. Yeah, and he, and he sadly can't play with Tony's bat because he's pitching. So right. it makes it really hard to stack because, you know, Upton went deep tonight, but there's no trout. He's out six to eight weeks. Rest in peace, most of our <laughs> enjoyment of baseball. But um, he is Jared Walsh and a bunch of. It'd be cheap stack, I'll tell you that much. If you want to go there, but it's it's I, I really just need to see a lineup. Like Phil Gosselin might be in there, and uh, Taylor Ward, and like David Fletcher isn't even playing. Jose Iglesias went deep. It's yeah. that's what you're playing with people. So keep that in mind. All right, we have a fun one here: the Milwaukee Brewers at the Kansas City Royals. I am really looking forward to this game for a few reasons. Corbin Burns is on the mound. He's facing Brad Keller. Over under is only seven and a half. Must be because the Brewers are actually going to score runs tonight. Um, Burns is 10 3 on DK, 10 5 on Fandle, both too cheap. Keller's 55 on DK, 71 on Fandle, both too expensive. So, um, I, I don't see any reason not to play Corbin Burns. Yeah, look, he's another reason why you're not paying up for those borderline guys, is because Corbin Burns is on this slate. I'm actually okay with Keller too, uh, just because Milwaukee has been miserable. Well, they're horrible. So, don't get me wrong, they're horrible. The, the price is, is okay for. Uh, how bad Milwaukee's been. So I, I'm not going to do it just because, like we've mentioned a million times, uh, too many good pitchers to do it. But I don't. I'm not. I don't despise the play if you want to make it. Yeah, I, I legit was telling um, my co-host on one of my Bench with Bubba episodes on Tuesday that if the Brewers cannot hit Mitch Keller, they just need to give up. I mean, Brad <laughs> Keller, Brad Keller, they just need to give up. Any so. Keller. Yeah, yeah, any killer, <laughs> Helen Keller, for all I care. Like it's it's gonna be crazy. So they hit like they are Helen Keller. Um, Dan yeah. Vogelbach is cheap. Omar Narvaez is cheap. Like they're all cheap. That's the fun part about this. Yeah, so, Kane is cheap. Uh, Long, Long Eddie is Garcia, cheap. Like they're yeah. all cheap. So I will have a, a Brewer stack. I will, and I'll be crying when we record tomorrow night for Thursday's episode. <laughs> but um, I I just I have to do it because they are. Keller's so bad, so horrifically yeah. bad. Uh, but Burns is awesome. I, I have zero problem. That's why when we get done, we're going to kind of recap the top pitchers because this is a very top-heavy pitching slate, like very top-heavy. Yeah. So it'll be fun to kind of break it down real quick at the end. 
Um, let's go to Oakland, Houston at the Oakland Athletics in this one. You have Granky versus Montas over under eight and a half on this one. Granky 8,900 on DK 77 on Fandle. Montas 7,200 on DK 8,000 on Fandle. I just can't go to either pitcher here. You, you, by now, people know I don't Granky. And Montas is very hot and cold, and I respect the snot out of this Houston lineup. Yeah, there's a lot of PVB data in this game, too. I mean, Granky finally had a quality start after three straight four-inning performances. I'm still not going to start him here. Montas, quality start last time out. I don't hate him. I would take Montas over Granky. But like I said, we're being picky, so we're going to pass here. Lots of PVB data. Uh, Loriano, six for 11 against Granky with two doubles, a triple, and a homer. So four of his six have gone for extra bases. Uh, five for 16 for Chapman with a homer and a double. 10 for 27 for Andrus with three doubles. Four for 11 for Pender. On the other side, uh, Carlos Correa, five for 17 against Montas. Uh, Brantley, six for 22 with three doubles and a bomb. Six for 19, so 316 with two doubles for Guriel. Six for 21 for Jose Altuve with two doubles. So there's too much of a history here, and Tucker is hot. Bregman's getting hot. Olsen went yard. Canna has been great. There's too many good hitters and these pitchers have been too up and down for me to want them. So this is a hitting stack game for me, either side. Yeah. Loriano, two home runs on Tuesday night. You said Holson went deep. Tucker went deep. Tucker hit an absolute bomb. Like <laughs> it was ridiculous what he did. Um, so I, I like these games. Tucker is still a great value. Should be in your cash game lineups. Like I respect Montas. I know he's very, very good. But these offenses are, are winning out right now, and I'm gonna, I don't mind that. And I think both – maybe Houston has a little bit of ownership, but I think both sides are pretty low-owned if you want to get some uh, lower-owned bats on this one. All right, Arizona at the Los Angeles Dodgers. We were supposed to have Merrill Kelly on Tuesday night. That got switched around for Corbin Martin. But we get him on Wednesday against Clayton Kershaw, Kelly 7,263. Kershaw 10-5 on DK, 10-2 on Fandle. He's the most expensive DK pitcher. Um I have zero problem using Kershaw. We know this Arizona offense. I will not use Merrill Kelly. We've talked about that before. Yeah, I mean, I still don't hate Kelly, but picky. So, no, not in this lineup. Uh, Kershaw, one of the better starters here. I think I'd still rather have Flaherty or Scherzer, yep. though. Yep, with you there. Um, Gavin Lux is far too cheap. He obviously had a grand slam on Tuesday night, but I already had him circled before he had his grand slam, like 3,300 yeah. on DK, 28 on Fandle is ridiculous. There's a lot to like with this Dodgers lineup because there's such a mix and match here. You get a lot of value if you really want to. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, you know, I think there's some value on the Arizona side too. Rojas, two for six with a double against Kershaw. And for whatever reason, Kershaw's – he has he obviously has had good performances against Arizona. But Arizona gets him sometimes. I don't think this lineup will do it, but you just never know. So he's been a little snake bit. Uh two for six for Muncie. Uh, but I mean Lux, Taylor, Will Smith, Matt Beatty, all these guys are white hot right now. So uh Betts went yard today as well. So uh I would feel much safer going with Dodgers bats and D-backs bats. No doubt about it. Last game of the evening, the Detroit Tigers against the Seattle Mariners. Tariq Skubal, Logan Gilbert, over under eight and a half on this one. Skubal 62 on DK, 61 on Fandle. Gilbert 47 on DK, 6K on Fandle. And the one thing I'll say before I give you the floor here, the Seattle Mariners, just for fun, against left-handed pitching, this season are striking out over 29% of the time with a 181 team batting average and a 74 WRC plus as much as I despise Tariq Skubal, you might be on to something Bogman. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't have enough upside, right? That's no. what I have in my notes It yeah. is good matchup, not enough upside, but Seattle's literally not hitting anything right now. Bad. So, uh, at, at that price, 62 and 61. And on the other side, Gilbert too, 47 and 6,000 at 47 for sure. Yeah. Love I mean, it. uh, his price is crazy too. You know, this will be a second time out. So you get those but butterflies out and everything. So I actually kind of like either side here, but mm -hmm. since we're being picky, if I had to choose one, I would take school because Seattle's been miserable. Yeah, you got to love Gilbert because Detroit striking out over 27% of the time versus righties. We know they have a very, very suspect offense as well. Gilbert has good strikeout stuff. You mentioned not his first start anymore, so the, the adrenaline should be hampered down just a little bit there. So I like both of them. I don't. I always don't mind a um, a bit of a Tigers stack, per se, but uh, it never really pops off the home run value you're looking for. So for me, I'm just going to kind of avoid the bats in this game if I have to. 
Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, it's it's I, there's not a bat I want to own here. It's mm-hmm. it's been rough. So just give me either side of the pitchers and no bats. All right, twelve games in the books. Let's recap things real quick. We talked about the high priced arms. You got the likes of Kershaw, Burns, Scherzer, Flaherty, Means, Rogers. They're all over nine k on DK. They're well priced on Fanduel as well. How do you like? What do you like to say? Your top two guys in that nine k and above range. Uh, for me, it would probably be oh, it's tough to pick two. Yeah. Flaherty uh, is definitely one against Pittsburgh, and I think Means has to be my other one. So I think those are my my top two. But it's hard to not say Scherzer. For me, it's like Flaherty and Burns. But literally, I know we say it from time to time. If you can check out ownership a couple hours before lock, take the lowest owned guy. Like they're yeah. all in phenomenal spots, really good spots. I wouldn't be on paper. They should all score well over twenty points. Right. So, like, you, you should they, they should be fighting for similar outputs for the most part. Um, speaking of that, with such good pitching, it kind of narrows down the stackability tonight. What stacks are you looking at? Yeah, there's not a ton that I like. Uh, St. Louis against Pittsburgh, I'm I'm okay with. Uh, Boston at Toronto, either side, and Houston at Oakland, either side. And if you want to go with a Yankee stack against Texas, I'm okay with that too. So, but not. For, for how many games we have, not a ton of stackable lineups to me. Yeah, yeah Boston Toronto is the big one. I'm just curious how chalky it is because of the price. Unless everyone see what's going to happen is if everyone stocks Boston Toronto, they're all going to use Logan Gilbert also. So right. keep that in mind. Like they're going to have to. So that's something to think about when you're building your lineups. But uh, I kind of think Tampa or Baltimore is interesting versus Tampa Bay. I think that could be a yeah. fun one. Washington versus Arietta is one I kind of want to keep an eye on. And then pray for me now. You mentioned Houston and Oakland. I like that. I'm gonna have some Milwaukee. It's gonna okay. happen. It's gonna happen. And I already said it. I'm gonna be. I might drink or cry on the show tomorrow. I don't know yet. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes. But it, it's gonna be fun. But before we do that, let's celebrate something. Let's celebrate some home run calls. You nailed one on Tuesday. Humphrey's gone back to back. He is heating up after you were heating up for a while there, NBA Jam style. So make sure you guys follow Line Star on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star MLB. They tweet out the home run calls of the night. If you retweet that tweet. Three lucky fans will be uh, entered to win some free swag by joining the three of us. And if our guys hit home runs, you win. It's as simple as that. So Bogman on Wednesday, May 19th, who is your home run call of the day? I'm going to go back to Goldie against Cahill. I am not a fan of Cahill. I watched him in Arizona for a while. Uh, He was out of baseball for a little bit, has come back, pitched much better than I give him credit for. That's for sure. Uh, But uh, give me Goldie against Cahill. I think he goes yard today. I like that one quite a bit. That's a very, very fun one indeed. Um, if I'm going to mix things up here, I'm trying to stay out of Toronto. Sounds like Boston. you're stalling a little bit. I am because I have so <laughs> many. Like, I, I want to go back to Toronto and Boston so bad, but I'm not. I'm going back to Washington here, and I'm going Schwarbaum. Kyle Schwarber okay. goes deep again in Washington against Jake Arietta. So give me Kyle Schwarber. You took Paul Goldschmidt. We'll see who Ryan Humphreys takes. Everybody, make sure you check that out on Twitter at Line Star app. They'll take care of you there and download the app in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. You can find myself on Twitter at Pediatric and Bogman on Twitter at Bogman Sports. And good luck tonight. We'll be back with you guys on Thursday. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Line Star App On Deck Podcast. Download Line Star App from the App Store or go to linestarapp.com for all your DFS baseball needs. If you love the On Deck Podcast, support KC Bubba and Bogman by rating and subscribing. Good luck.